Ah, Jurassic Park. A classic. The source of every young child's desire to become a paleontologist when they grow up. Just like how Indiana Jones made everyone want Sean Connery as their grandpa. Well, I was one of those bone-addled idiots. After Jurassic Park, I became obsessed with dinosaurs and dinosaur accessories. Ninja Turtles? Pleh. Ugh. Foolish. Transformers? I don't even know how they work. Does anybody know how they work? How to put them together? Whatever these things are? Not dinosaurs. Nothing could compare to the razor tooth grin of a spitting Dilophosaurus filled with gross puddle water. I won't go into detail about the series here, but safe to say I owned just about everything Jurassic Park when I was younger, including the games. You'd be in a really bad mood. <laughs> Boy, were they grrrr good. But there was a problem. No matter how many raptors I tased or eggs I collected, I could never get far. These early Jurassic Park games were either too difficult or too convoluted for my tiny reptile brain to handle. The JP game series was no walk on the beach with a martini and butler cadre. And though I tried to persevere, I always ended up as dino bait. But I needed my fix. I was still a crazed, bone-obsessed compsasaur, after all. I need to be fed. But what game would go a bit easier on me, yet still allow me the thrill of meeting these larger-than-life ancestors of prehistoric beauty? And then shoot them. Shoot them, yeah, blam blam, blam, need to shoot them, yee-hor, my baby's a gun. Carnivores 2 it's not Carnivores 1, I never played that. Get that shit out of here. It's Carnivores 2. Built on the cusp of the big 200X, Carnivores puts you in the role of a millionaire hunter on a dino tracking extravaganza. There's no story mode here, but honestly, who needs context? It's a pure hunting experience, just you, the open wild, and those scaly skinned behemoths. The game itself is simple. You start with 100 points. Mighty Max. Mighty Max is a cool toy too. And War Planets. Anybody remember War Planets? You spend your points on weapons, gear, which dinosaurs you're planning to hunt, and even the island you'll be exploring. Each type of dinosaur is worth a certain amount of points relative to their difficulty in hunting, with dangerous predators making the top of the list in terms of value and overall killitude. There are a few tools that make it a bit easier to sneak around the environment, like this camouflage suit that keeps you from being spotted. However, these items take away a percentage of the points you earn on a mission, so it isn't smart to use them all at once. Except for double ammo. Free double ammo? You bet! Blam blam, yeah, blam, shoot em, shoot em, blam blam, yab dabba, cornbread. You'll actually get a bonus to your earned points if you use tranquilizer rounds for your weapons, letting these sweet babies live another day. But if you don't kill them proper, it means you can't shelve them into your trophy room. So you're actively losing points if you ever decide to go lethal, with only the benefit being your own sense of pride in killing animals dumber than you. Sounds like a dino dickbag thing to do. Once you're on the island proper, you wander around trying to locate your target. If you didn't pick up the radar, this means traipsing along, roaring obscenities into the distance, and hoping you get a reply. <laughs> Hopefully you find your target and knock them out before they get any the wiser, because these suckers are fast. But even if you manage to hit them once, you can follow the trail of berries they leave behind and reacquire their location to finish them off. You'll find other dinosaurs roaming around the island too, aside from the ones you're hunting specifically. And you need to be wary because running into carnivores can end your expedition in the blink of an eye. And if you die, you lose any points initially made on your hunt. There's no cover, no lives, no health system. Once a carnivore pounces on you, you're done. Back to HQ. And they always seem to appear when you least expect it, weaving in and out of gunfire. And that's about it. Most of the game is clambering around hills, through brush, trying to find your way to targets. It's a pleasantly relaxing game. <laughs> Unless it isn't. The game does a good job of immersing you in the environment. The sounds of trickling water and buzzing insects help to create a naturalistic atmosphere in quite a collection of habitats. There are mountain ravines that are more challenging to traverse, 
Stretches of beaches spanned by water and even abandoned structures, straight out of something from the Lost World. Except here, maybe not as good, because, you know, they had less budget. Taking hunts during different times of the day can add to the atmosphere, with heavy fog-coated mornings and image-intensified nights. I like how many options are provided in general. The island is padded out with worthless critters that offer no value to society, other than that they add a little bit of an all-natural, lived-in feel to the place. Look at these cute guys. Pterodon, a noodly fellow. What is this monstrosity? Mash, mash hop? Mish, mish up, mach, match up? A lot of games will hide progression behind a wall of secrecy and punctuation. Not here. You get to see everything the game has to offer right from the get-go. And the ability to mix and match your setup and hunting scheme is probably one of the biggest draws of the series. Everyone likes customization. customization. Yes, it's a fine game. Dinosaurs, guns. What more could you really want? Could you really, really want? Well, I used to play this game for so many hours as a kid, but then again, I think we all played a lot of games that were a bit... off. Despite the things I like about this game, I absolutely recognize that Carnivores 2 is a bit shit. For instance, you can end up spending a lot of your time wandering around with nothing actually happening. These maps are pretty gigantic, and like I said, these dinosaurs are fast. Without a decent weapon, you might be chasing your targets for... And the scenery isn't that fantastic. So prepare for hours of running around punctuated by a little bit of shooting in between. Bang bang, pachoo, bang bang, pachoo, choo, pew, pew. Dark Souls 2 isn't that bad. There's also this weird bug that causes the game's frame rate to plummet any time you aim a weapon. It's as if the fabric of time is warping around your godless, abhorrent presence. In fact, there are a lot of oddities in trying to play Carnivores 2 on a modern machine. Sometimes the game simply crashes back to the menu at random. It absolutely refuses to be minimized without muting all audio and the computer itself. And occasionally, this happens. While the point-based equipment system is interesting, it wasn't balanced all too well. The requirements for hunting certain dinosaurs or using certain weapons are absurd. Even getting to the point where you can hunt some more dangerous prey is going to take a while, grinding out a few hours worth of credits on weaker subjects. Might as well get used to seeing those early game herbivores, because you'll need to reinstate their extinction status in order to hunt anything more interesting. How many points to hunt a T-Rex? Not even including the location and the weapon cost? It's no wonder that even my fixated younger self couldn't amass enough points to hunt the truly big game. The beast that we all came here to see. It's time to make up for my childish failures and put my nose to the grindstone. The Rex must be hunted. What? What? No. Don't. Don't look at this. Don't. Don't worry about that. Don't. It's not even supposed to be up here. Don't. Don't look. It's. Sh shadow play. Alright. Here we go. Somewhere on this island is the greatest predator that ever lived. And the second greatest predator must take him down.